Welcome to another edition of Film vs. Film. Today's episode, I'm putting up, <laughs> arguably, the two most popular Disney films of all time. Those being The Lion King versus Frozen. Now, if you're a longtime viewer of mine, you would know that I don't even have these two films in the same ballpark. I much prefer The Lion King. To this day, I still find Frozen to be one of the most overrated Disney movies. But can it at least get, like, one point against this masterpiece? Well, without further ado, let the battle begin. Story. This is, in my opinion, the biggest flaw for Frozen. The story just... It's not coherent. It's also really boring. And there's a lot of plot holes. It feels very rushed. <laughs> You're kind of asking, how could a movie be boring but also rushed? Well, that's the thing. Because the movie doesn't take enough time to develop its characters, or to let you appreciate its characters, how am I supposed to connect with them? And on top of that, it's got some of the worst humor that I've ever seen. And, and I know... A lot of Disney movies don't capture that, the humor aspect of their films. Very few do. Like, a good example would be The Emperor's New Groove. But I get really mixed feelings with, with Frozen. Is it trying to be a comedy, or is it trying to take itself seriously? I don't know. And that... And I understand that a lot of Disney films have elements of both. But they at least lean towards one of them and they master that with like like the lion king for example yes it has comedic elements to it but that's not the forefront it's not trying to be the forefront it understands its place now i'm not a huge fan of the humor in the lion king granted but at least it's not obtrusive and it's it's definitely not nearly as bad as frozen I'll get into the characters a little bit later, but the stories in both movies, not exactly identical by any means, but they kind of have similar premises. Both main characters are born in royalty, and something goes wrong, and they, they escape or they, they flee from their home to try and live a different life. But in Lion King's case, like I said earlier, it just, it feels, it not only does it feel more dramatic, it feels more coherent, and there's a, there's a lot more emotion there, there's a lot more time invested into the story. Now, the main character going through that journey, it's kind of, I'll, I'll like I said, I'll get into that a little bit later, but but the but the main but the main core of the story is well, of course it's not perfect, but it's you know it's executed well. So this is an easy point for the Lion King for me. I also can't forget. If we're gonna go by scene by scene comparison, hands down, the Lion King wins. Outside of, I'll get into the songs a little bit later, but outside of one particular scene in Frozen, I hardly remember anything from it. It do, it just just doesn't have that 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 
rewatchability factor, if you know what I mean. Like, there's nothing there that I would, I would want to go back to. But The Lion King, holy crap. One of the best scenes in Disney history, spoiler alert, is Mufasa's death. Like, how, how can you get much better than that? It's so, so heart wrenching, and it's, it is so awesome. It, it's, it's the 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 effects of it are are are, are sad, but I, I don't mean sad as in like like it's a, it's a you know oh my god it's so bad that it, that, it, that it's sad, but it that's what it's supposed to do. Like the results of of his of his death just bring a tear to you to your eye. And the climax is awesome. Of of course, you know, the circle, the opening scene that, you know, with Circle of Life, that's iconic. It's untouchable. How you can't get you can't go wrong with it. Characters. Hmm, this is where this is where things will get a little bit closer, I feel like. We'll start off with the Lion King. I don't like Simba. I'm sorry, I never I never really have. Young Simba, he's just annoying. He's unnecessarily annoying at that. I understand he's born to royalty, so he's highly privileged, but I just wish he would shut up every once in a while. It's like, okay, we get it. You're gonna be the king. And then as an adult, he's just really bland. It doesn't help the fact that Matthew Broderick voices him. No offense to the guy. I'm sure he's I'm sure he's a decent actor in other places, but here this is not his best work. It just I feel like they could have made him a lot more a lot more compelling, a lot more just I mean, it's not like he's unlikable or anything, but there's not really anything to say about him. So as a whole, I just, I don't, it's kind of like a waste of potential. If we're going to compare him to the protagonist in Frozen, well, I would consider Elsa the main protagonist. She's far superior. Far, far superior. Some would argue that maybe she's a little bland too, but see... She's not, she, she's supposed to be a very shy, down-to-earth character. And I, as someone who is like that IRL, I can really sympathize with her. I can, I can relate to that. And while I mentioned earlier, the story isn't exactly that, that, you know, it's not the best. Some would argue that Oh, Elsa didn't help any matters because she caused, you know, the winter and she's not doing anything about it. Well, not everybody, not everybody, not everybody's brave enough to become the hero. She's just, how, how could she, how could she think rationally when, when everybody is, is, you know, putting her down or calling her a monster she just, she's so emotionally disconnected from everybody. She's so emotionally drained that I don't, I don't entirely blame her for, for, for just being, becoming a recluse. It doesn't help the fact that she was, you know, locked down because of her powers, which she has no control over. So, and, and on top of that, I, Well, don't take this the wrong way, but I, I, she has a, a very iconic look. It's very effective. I mean, Simba does it too, but I digress. So if we're going to talk about the other characters, well, if we go back to the Lion King, <laughs> if we're going to compare the, the villains, pfft, 
Scar all the way. He's so badass. I love him. One of the best Disney villains of all time. He's like, he's, if you, if you ever see, if you ever look at like top 10 best villains or top 10 best Disney villains of all time, Scar is usually always at number one or in the top three. Like, there's there's no other there's no more words to describe just how awesome he is. But 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 Hans, I, I guess I guess as a character sometimes he's fine. But there's not really a whole lot to say about him and and the, and his twist. It comes. At, I mean, if you if you if you first watched it in theaters, it was kind of cool, but after rewatching it, it's like, why is he doing this? Again, that's why the story is just such a huge problem. And then you have well, you have Timon and Pumbaa, who I used to kinda like when I was a kid. Eh, they're okay. I don't they have a, they have a few funny elements to them, but I I don't need to watch them ever again. And then, oh Mufasa, I love Mufasa. He's not in the movie for very long, but he is such he is a fantastic mentor character, a fantastic fatherly character. Like if you watch the movie, uh, he scolds Simba for. For disobeying him but he quickly realizes that well we all make mistakes so he he forgives him that's that's good parenting good parenting 101 then you have nala who mm, is a is a decent romantic uh r romantic uh a partner for simba but again not really a whole lot to say about her Zazu, Zazu is pretty cool. Just kind of a one note character, just there for comedic relief. Uh, has, has a few uh, clever quips every now and then. So who do you, who else do we have in Frozen? Well, we also have Anna. I've never liked her. I just, again, I cannot. Like I said earlier, how I can connect with Elsa. Well, Anna's pretty much the antithesis of Elsa. I can't connect with her. She's just, I find her to be really annoying at times. And I just never got the appeal of her. Kristoff and Sven, they're just there. They're just kind of, they're just there to, you know, for a plot device. Uh, and then, and then Olaf. I stated earlier how I used to like Timo Timon and Pumbaa, but they're just, you know, not really my thing anymore. Well, Olaf is like that, but worse. There's only one of him, so you'd think I'd be less annoyed by him, but I'm really not. I'm really not, and... If we're talking about all these characters through both Frozen 1 and Frozen 2, I actually don't mind Olaf, but just in 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 the first movie again, what does he what does he add ex besides comic relief? What does he add to the story? Uh, you know, I I don't know. So in The Lion King, you have two awesome characters, and then in Frozen, you have one really good character. For that reason, I'm going with The Lion King in terms of characters. Animation. Both are top-notch when it comes to Disney. Like, S-tier level. However, it's traditional animation versus CGI. Is this really a fair comparison? I, I'm not sure about that. 
So it basically comes down to what's your preferred animation style. Because if we're going by that logic, I prefer 2D animation, so I'm going to go with The Lion King. Objectively speaking, Frozen is probably... I don't know if it's the better looking movie, but it's more technical. Of course it's more technical because it's, it's, it's a lot more newer in comparison. But I am going to go with The Lion King, but not just because it's 2D. There's one problem I have with Frozen in terms of animation. Technically, it looks it looks gorgeous. There's a, there's way too much blue and white, however. There's not a whole lot of other color palettes. And I understand that, you know, the, the majority of the movie takes place during the winter. So it's like a winter-themed movie. But it, but compared to like it, it, its successor, Frozen Two has a lot more uh, colors to it, a lot more vibrancy to it. This just kind of comes comes across as just one 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 color or kind of two color palettes, and we're gonna take these two color palettes to the absolute max, sort of thing. So that, that's my reasoning behind why I would take uh, Lion King's animation. Music and soundtrack. Uh, we'll get Frozen out of the way first. We gotta talk about the elephant in the room. I'm not sure if I'm if I'm in the minority when I say this. I definitely wouldn't be like back in like 2014, but I might be nowadays. I like Let It Go. I truly do. It's an amazing song. The problem is that it's been done to death. I I don't really need to listen to it ever again. But if I go, if I just go on my way to listen to it when I feel like it, I, I love it. I, I really do. But outside of that song, the rest, they're really bland. They're really forgettable. Like, um, do you want to make a snowman or do you want to build a snowman? It's, it's, it's very brief. I know it's also kind of popular, but I never really liked it. And then Love is Like an Open Door. Uh, that's okay, I suppose. But it's sung by two characters that I'm not a huge fan of, so... Uh... And then, then the rest of the songs, I don't even remember the names to them. I know there's one by the trolls. Can't... can't... Put my put my finger on it. Um, well, there's one by Olaf, which of course I, I wouldn't really care for. So yeah, that's that's like that's pretty much it for 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 the songs. Now, if, if we, now the score is I guess the score is pretty good. However, compared to a successor, I don't think it's nearly as good. And then The Lion King. Songs in The Lion King, I have mixed feelings about. I love Be Prepared, sung by Scar. But of course I'm going to, because for, first of all, I'm a sucker for villain songs. And Scar, I mean, Jeremy Irons does a, does a decent job of singing. Of course he's not a singer, but, but it's just so cool to hear Scar sing like that and really show off his, his narcissism in a good way. Um, Circle of Life of, is, like I said, it's iconic. Um, it's, like, it's so epic. However, compared to um, He Lives in You, I actually prefer He Lives in You. Bo both are, are, are incredibly good, however, and I, and I, and I would not be opposed to listening to A Circle of Life over He Lives in You if I was forced to. 
The rest of the songs, well, Akuna Matata, again, I don't need to listen to it again. Is it objectively bad? Probably not, but it's it's been done to death. And then Can You Feel the Love Tonight? I prefer the Elton John version, but the soundtrack version, it's sung by, I don't even, well, it's it, it's supposed to be sung by uh, Simba and, and Nala. They're not actually singing. Um, the characters themselves aren't actually singing w with their mouths, but it's almost like you can hear their thoughts sort of thing. It's a cool, it's a, it's a neat idea, but it's not exactly that. Well, I mean, I noticed some people it's probably pretty memorable, but for me, the Ellen John version is where it's at. Where it's at. Uh, I know I'm forgetting one. I feel like I am. Maybe I'm not. Maybe that's it. I could have sworn there was one more. No, I suppose not. So, mm, I just, again, Be Prepared and Circle of Life are, are so badass. And Let It Go is, is fantastic as well. But there's only, again, you know, talking about quantity, there's two more songs in The Lion King that are that are better than there is in Frozen. So, oh, of course, how could I forget? The score in The Lion King? It's Hans Zimmer. One of the, he's an amazing composer. And, 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 and the orchestral music in Mufasa's death in that scene. Oh my God. <sighs> It's so epic. Just, just everything about this movie, the score, the story, the animation, it's just, it's just grand. It really captures that essence of this is the big thing. This is where it's at. It's not even my favorite Disney movie, but who to... This is this is off topic. I'm going to go into a little bit of a rant here, but whoever says that this movie is overrated, they're wrong. I'm sorry, they're wrong. They either have never watched it or they haven't given it a chance. It, yeah, that's I, I that's all I'm going to say. I I'm going with the Lion King. Let's let's check out the final results. And the winner is The Lion King. Are you really surprised? I know I'm not. I th yeah, that's pretty much what I expected. Frozen has good elements to it. It does. It's not all awful. But it's not the best Disney movie of all time. If you if you think it is, then great. I'm happy for you. But for me personally, and it, it, it doesn't even have to do with the fact, like I was 13 when Frozen came out. I wasn't even born when, when The Lion King came out. So I've lived with The Lion King longer. That, that has nothing to do with that. I just don't find Frozen to be a particularly interesting movie. So, it's just my opinion. But until then, I will see you guys in the next Film vs. Film.